Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's virtual audio described high intensity workout. As a reminder, you should always consult your doctor before beginning any type of exercise or physical activity. You are responsible for your own health and safety at all times. We encourage you to self monitor throughout the workout, take breaks when needed, hydrate, and modify your activity based on how you and your body are responding to the workout. Northwest Association for Blind Athletes mission is to provide life changing opportunities through sports and physical activity for individuals who are blind and visually impaired. And with that, I will lead, hand the reins to Mary, who will be leading us through our audio described workout today. Okay, thank you, Tara, and welcome again, everybody, to our high intensity workout for today. We will be doing a warm up. We'll be doing two circuits of an EMOM. EMOM is E-M-O-M, -M, which stands for every minute on the minute. So I'll explain more about that in a second. Uh, but we'll be doing two circuits of an EMOM and then a five minute core exercise. And then we'll finish with our cool down. Just a little more information about our EMOM for today. Uh, we are doing two sets, EMOM being every minute on the minute. We are doing a specific number of exercises every minute. So let's say we have push-ups and we, just as an example, let's say we're doing push-ups, five push-ups for the first minute. So you do five push-ups. If you finish before the minute's over, let's say it takes you 30 seconds to do five push-ups, then you have that extra 30 seconds at the end to rest. If it takes you all the way up into that minute, make sure, I'll try to give about a 10, 15 second warning before the minute is over so that you can give yourself a proper break just so that we can go into the next exercise. So our EMOMs are broken up into two 10 minute chunks. So the first EMOM has five exercises that will run through twice. And then the second circuit of EMOMs also has five exercises. We'll, excuse me, we'll run through those twice as well. For our core workout today, we have five exercises that we'll go through again. And then we'll do that similar to how we've been doing them before. If you've joined us in our previous workouts, we'll do five of those or all five of those exercises for 30 seconds. And then after that, we'll repeat them and do them again. So it's going to be a great workout. Again, we're really excited that you're here. So we're going to get started with our warm up. Warm up has about nine, eight or nine exercises we'll do. So make sure you have quite a bit of space around you to move around and make sure you have water if you need it. You do need it, so just grab some water and a towel if you would need that to wipe off throughout our workout. If you wanna grab any soup cans or if you have any weights around, we'll be using those if you have them for our workout today. So go ahead, pause the video, go ahead and grab those and then come back and join us. We're gonna start with our warm up. It's going to be our low intensity or low impact burpees. So you're just going to stand with your feet directly beneath you, reach your hands up to the sky, go up on your toes, and then bring your hands to the ground, walk your hands out to that inchworm position, and then stand back up, walk your hands back to your feet, stand up, and then repeat. So let's do that about five times. Again, reach up to the sky, up on your toes, back down to your flat feet, hands down to the ground, walk your hands out so you're in that inchworm high plank position, and then walk your hands back to your feet. All right, let's repeat that about three more times. Okay, this is a great exercise to get your body, your full body completely warmed up and ready to go. I'm on my fourth, oops, I'm on my fourth time. I'm going to do this one more time. And then we'll move on to our next warm up. All right. Our next warm up is a stationary side lunge. So you can start with your feet together or you can start with your feet spread apart, but you're just lunging left to right, side to side. So if you want, start with your feet together, apart, doesn't matter. If you're starting with your feet together, just take a step out to your left, lunge down, and then stand back up. When I say lunge, basically, I just mean when you're stepping out to the side, you're going to sink your hips backwards, bend at your knees, Hinge at your waist, make sure that your weight is going backwards, lunge down, and then stand up. Whenever you bend your knees, you don't want your knees to go over your toes when you're lunging. That's just bad form. You just want to 
make sure that your if your knees are going over your toes, it's because your weight isn't backward enough. So just sink your hips, try to sink your hips backwards whenever you're going into this. And for this exercise, you can just continue to do these, but this is a dynamic exercise. All of our warm-up is a dynamic warm-up because we want to strengthen, strengthen, but lengthen and shorten our muscles as we're doing this warm-up. All right, let's get a few more of these in. I'm gonna do two more, once on the right, once on my left. All right, you can keep doing those if you'd like, but we're going to move on to arm circles. So to do arm circles, you'll put your arms out at your sides like a T, feet can be together, feet can be apart, feet can be moving around, whatever you prefer, but your arms are out at your sides and you're just making circles with your arms. I'm starting out by making arm big circles forward. So big circles forward and then you can switch it up, do a little medium circles or smaller circles, really just get those shoulders warmed up. Once you've had enough going forward, do the arm circles backwards, just so that you can get that rotation backwards warmed up in your shoulders. All right, you can do this for a few more seconds. And then we're gonna switch our workouts. So we're gonna do our knee to chest. You can progress this into a high knee run, or you can just bring your knees up to your chest as you'd like. So again, just like the workout or the exercise knee to chest says, you're just going to put all your weight on your left leg, bring your right leg up as high as you can, and then back down. I'm gonna switch all my weight on my right leg, left knee up and down. So you can do this exercise this way, or if you prefer, you can do this faster so it's more of a high knee run. So you're basically just doing high knees in place, and that would sound like this. You wanna to try to bring your legs up to about a 90 degree angle with your torso. All right, and you can pause from doing that. While you're doing that exercise, your arms should be moving in opposition. So when your right knee comes up, your left hand comes up. Left knee comes up, right hand comes up. When I say your hand comes up, your arm, that arm is just bending at a 90 or 45 degree angle towards your shoulder. Our next exercise that we're doing is going to be a forward lunge. So for a forward lunge, it's just like going side to side, you're just going forward. So I'm going to start with hitting my left foot forward. So I'll take a step forward with my left leg, bend my leg down, bend my back leg down, and then stand up, and then come back. Again, we don't have to hold this, it's not any kind of stationary stretch. We want this to be a dynamic stretch. So once you go down into that lunge, stand back up and go right back to where you started. So again, feet together, take a big step out, big step forward, lunge down to the ground, front knee, back knee are at 90 degree angles, stand up and repeat. Let's get about two more of these in. I'll do one on my left and finish on my right. So we have our lunges, now we're doing our side bends. For side bends, your feet can either be together side by side or they can be apart, but you're going to lift up your right arm to the ceiling. You can have your left hand just hanging at your side on your hip, but your right hand is up in the air, and then you're gonna lean to the left. Once you lean to the left, feel that stretch in your side, Stand it back up and repeat on the other side. I know it'll feel good to just hold it, hold that stretch there when you're bending to the side, but remember to come back to your standing position and repeat on the other side. Get two more of these in, leaning to my left, leaning to my right. All right, two more exercises left and then we're gonna get into our first EMOM. This next exercise is called a hamstring scoop. So I'm going to put all my weight on my left leg bring my right foot about half a foot, a foot in front of my left foot. Again, all your weight is going to be on your left leg. You can bend your left leg as much as you need to, 
bend down to the ground and scoop up towards in front of you and then bring your hands back to your sides. Again, all your weight on your right leg, put your left foot forward, your left heel and your right heel when you do this on your right leg. Left heel is going to be digging into the ground, toes are going to be pointed toward the sky. Bend your right leg, bring your body toward the ground, scoop your hands down towards the ground and then up in front of you. Let's repeat that about five, whoops, five times total. If you lose your balance, it's okay. Pick yourself back up and start again. If you lose your balance, you can also try to do a wider stance so that you widen your base of support. Your base of support is just the area that your body covers from the points of contact that you're under. So it'll all do the same stretch no matter if your legs are more closer together or farther apart. It's just that stretch in the back of your upper leg. So let's do one more on the other side. And then for our final exercise, we'll do speed jacks. So let's do these for about 10 seconds. They are jumping jacks just quickly. So to do speed jacks, you're going to, at the same time, you'll jump your feet out, you'll bring your hands up above your head, and then you'll jump your feet back together and your hands back down to your sides like a rubber band is snapping. So again, jump your feet out to your sides. At the same time, bring both hands up so they touch above your head or just so that both of your hands are above your head and then jump back feet together, arms at your sides. We'll do this for about 10 seconds total. Ready, go. Two more seconds and stop. Okay, if you need to stretch anything else right now, now is the time to do that. Definitely make sure that your body is stretched out. If your shoulders are feeling a little tight still, get a couple more arm circles in there or if you wanna stretch out your legs a little more, feel free to pause the video and then rejoin us whenever you're ready. I'm going to grab a drink quickly and then we'll get started. So I definitely encourage you to do the same whenever you are thirsty. And throughout your videos, if you're watching this at home and you're watching a recording, you can pause the workout, take a break whenever you need to throughout this exercise. Some of them do get a little intense. So if you need to, as always, feel free to take a break or just elongate your breaks that we have as long as you need to. So for our first circuit, 10 minutes, five exercises that we'll do, we'll go through them twice. First exercise that we're doing is a push up to a downward dog position. So you can either do a modified push up, a push up on the wall, a standard push up, a tricep push up, whatever kind of push up variation you prefer. Do a downward dog position. So just a reminder for your push up, your arms are going, your hands are going to be flat on the ground. Fingers can be spread out pretty wide apart just so that you have a good base of support underneath you. Legs, if you're doing a standard push-up, legs can be straight back behind you. You don't want any kind of unnatural curves in your body, but your back can be a little arched in this. So if you are doing a modified push-up, knees can be on the ground. Feet can also be on the ground, feet can be up, but just make sure that you have that straight line going from your knees to your shoulders. All right, so I'm gonna do this in a standard push-up. So we're going to do our push up, bring your chest as low to the ground as you can, push your body up, and then push up into a downward dog position. So in this downward dog position, my heels are going back towards the ground as best they can, and my upper body is kind of collapsing towards my legs so that I'm forming that V shape with my legs. And then we're going to repeat that, push up, downward dog, push up, downward dog. We'll repeat that 10 times. And then after we do that for 10 repetitions, you can take a break. You can have the rest of that minute to relax. Again, I'll let you know whenever we're approaching the end of the minute so you can make sure that you give yourself a good break in between that. Our next exercise is skater jumps. We're gonna do 15 of these on each side. So what this exercise includes you can start with your feet together, side by side, right underneath your body. 
you're going to, again, do a lateral movement, so a movement side to side. You're going to start by, I'm gonna go on my right side, so I'm going to jump to the right, land on my right foot only. My left foot is backwards. I'm a little, my torso is bent forward a little bit and my hands are at a 90 degree angle. My arms are bent 90 degree angle in front of me. And that is our first skater jump to the side. To so transition to the left side, you just jump to the left. Oops, and if you can't balance yourself, that's okay. Definitely kick that other leg out to support yourself, but then go back into that skater jump. So then that's your skater jump to the left. I'm gonna do it from another angle. So when you jump to the right side, you're going to again, jump to the right side, right leg stays bent, arms bent at a 90 degree angle. My left leg is also bent at a 90 degree angle at my knee. I'm leaning forward a little bit just so that I can keep my balance and stay lower to the ground to have a lower center of gravity. Switching to the left side, we jump to the left. Whoops, get your balance together and then go back to the right. The key to this is staying as low as you can each time, bringing that back leg to a 90 degree angle, leaning forward so you have a little better chance of balancing. For our next exercise, we're doing a tempo tricep dip. So anytime that we do an exercise that has tempo in front of it, that just means that we're doing it for a tempo, a specific tempo. So for this set of the circuit of exercises, it'll be a three, two, one tempo. So whenever you, you can count down three, two, one, one, two, three, I'll be counting down three, two, one. When I'm counting, when I'm starting at three, that's my starting position. When I get to one, I'm at my lower position. The key to a tempo exercise is that it's at a tempo. It's not three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two, one, or else you'll just be doing them very quickly. The point behind doing a tempo exercise is that you're doing it a little slower, so you're activating more muscles and more muscle fibers to lower yourself or do whatever the exercise is that you're doing. So we're doing tempo tricep dips. So if you have a couch or a very sturdy table, you can use that. I'm just going to go on the ground and do this. So for my tricep dip, I'm sitting on my bottom. My legs are bent at about a 90 degree angle. My feet are on the ground and I'm going to put my hands back behind me. My palms are on the ground. Fingertips are facing forward. And then I'm going to lift my body, lift my bottom off the ground. So now I'm just on my hands and my feet. I'm going to bend my elbows so that my elbows point backwards. So again, my bottom's off the ground, elbows are pointing backward. And then I'm going to push myself back up so that my arms are straight. So my arms being straight, feet on the ground is my three position. So I'm gonna lower myself to the tempo of three, two, one, and then back up. So again, I'll just lower myself, three, two, one. At one, my bottom is touching the ground, and then I am lifting back up to start over. For this exercise, it is a little helpful if you're up on an elevated surface like a couch or a table, whatever you're using, just make sure that it has a solid backing to it. If you would like to modify this, you can go against a wall. So. You can stand against a wall, take about a step and a half forward from that wall. There isn't a wall behind me, but just to demonstrate for everybody, if you're doing it against the wall instead of on the ground, you can put your hands, keep the palms of your hands on the wall, and then lower yourself back towards the wall and then forward. If you're doing this on the wall, you'll know what I mean because your body, you'll definitely feel it in your triceps and you really wanna keep your arms at your sides pointing backwards you don't want your arms to flare out because you'll be working a different muscle group at that point. So again, if you're doing this on the wall, palms on the wall, body is out, not touching the wall at all, just your palms are, you're lowering yourself back against the wall and then going forward. It's a little challenging to do without a wall, but uh, that's the big picture behind that. Two more exercises left. We have our backward lunge and knee drive. So just like doing our forward lunge, we are going to make sure we have some space behind us. We're going to take a step back with our right foot, lunge down, so right and left knees are bending at a 90 degree angle. Lunge down, your knee can touch the ground or you can just get as low to the ground as you can. And then you're going to bring your knee 
up for a knee drive, that same right knee that you brought backwards, up to knee drive, and then you'll put your foot back by the other foot. So again, I'm gonna do that on my left side. Take a step back with my left foot, lunge down 90 degree angle at my right knee and left knee, switch, bring my left knee forward. My left knee is coming up, or my left knee thigh is coming up to about a 90 degree angle with my torso and my leg. And that's how we're going to do that exercise. We'll do 10 on each side for that. And then to finish, we're doing a tempo Superman. So if you're familiar with doing Supermans, you're going to go on the ground. You're going to lay flat on the ground, okay? Your arms are going to be stretched out in front of you, legs stretched out in front of you, feet together, hands close together as well. And to do this exercise, you're just going to slowly, again with that tempo, three, two, one, lift your limbs up off the ground, and then lower them back down to the ground. You're just going to lift them straight up, not out to the side, just straight up and then back down. Again, going with that tempo, three being on the ground, one being totally up in the air. To add a little challenge to this, you don't have to return your limbs back down to the ground completely. You can lift your arms and legs. You can keep your arms and legs kind of lifted off of the ground and then go up with your exercise and then down. All right, we are ready to get started. Again, if you need to grab a quick drink, just from going through those, I'm going to, just because I'm talking quite a bit. Okay, we'll get started. Again, this is 10 minutes. We're gonna run through each exercise twice, and then we'll go into the next set of exercises, and we'll explain those and then complete those. So I'm going to start our timer. All right, I'll give everybody a five second countdown, and then again, I will try to give a 10, 15 second warning towards the end of the minute whenever we are almost finished with our exercise. All right, I'm going to press start. In um, the first exercise we're doing is push up to down dog. Okay, we're gonna start in five, four, three, two, one, go. All right, so get into that push up position. We'll be doing 10 of these. So do your push up to down dog push up, down dog. Going. We're gonna stop to take our time. We are halfway there, keep going. I have about five more exercises to do. All right, we have 10 seconds left. If you need to take a break, definitely take a break. Our next exercise are skier jumps. We'll start those in five, four, three, two, one, and go. We're doing 15 on each side. These are skater jumps, excuse me. Skier jumps are with two feet. This is just with one. We're doing again 15 on each side. 15 seconds into this. Again, if you lose your balance, try to do this by a wall so you can catch yourself. Remember, try to stay low as you can so that you're keeping those quads engaged throughout the entire exercise. All right, I'm going to take a break. We have 15 seconds left. Our next exercise are tempo tricep dips. 10 seconds left. Five, four, three, two, one, and go. Tempo tricep dips. We're doing 20 of these. Remember that three, two, one, up. Three, two, one.
Nice work. Again, if you can, try to do these on a couch or a surface that is elevated. You could use stairs. You could use a sturdy table that's pushed against the wall or a table that's just super sturdy. All right, we have 15 seconds left for this exercise. Great job. Our next exercise is a backwards lunge and knee drive. We'll be doing 10 on each side in five, four, three, two, one, and go. So a backwards lunge, drive that same knee that went backwards forward. Repeat on the other side. Remember we are doing 10 of this exercise on each side. Whew. If you lose your balance, when you go down into that lunge, feel free to just take a knee, rest here for a second, regain your balance, and then pop right back up. Oof. Keep it going, everybody. You're doing great. Remember to switch legs. Right leg back, left leg back. All right, we have 10 seconds left here. Remember to grab some water if you need to. Our next exercise are our tempo supermans. We'll start those in three, two, one, and go. So arms straight out in front of you. Three, two, one, lift and down. We are doing 15 of these. Three, two, one and down. Try to challenge yourself each time by lifting up further. Or if you don't want to lift, you just want to hold it for a specific amount of time, that superman position, you can. We are almost halfway through our first EMOM. 15 seconds left. All right, I'm gonna take a break real quick. Okay, five seconds, then we'll go back into push up to down dog. Three, two, one, push up to down dog. Let's go. We are doing 10 of these. We are in the second part of our first EMOM circuit. All right, we are 30 seconds in. Keep pushing. If you want to do your standard push up, but you want a little more support, kick your feet out to the side. Again, widen that base of support. Kick your feet out. Do that push up and then push up to your downward dog. We have about 10 seconds left. Finish up, take a break. Whatever you'd like to do, we're doing skater jumps in three, two, one, and go. Again, lateral jump with one foot to the right and then to the left. Keep breathing throughout this exercise. Everybody's got it. Keep going. This is a great cardio workout because you're jumping. And if you're like me, you're talking. But regardless, still a great workout. We have almost, we have 20 seconds left. Ten seconds. Keep it up for that 15 times. All right, we're gonna switch in five, four, three, two, one, and down to your tricep dips. We're doing 20 of these again. Remember these are tempo tricep dips. So your body is up in the air in three, two, one. One, your bottom is on the ground. Push back up so that your arms are straight. Three, two, one, and push back up. 20 of these. 
and we got it. Remember to breathe throughout the entire exercise. All right, we have 10 seconds left. Take a break if you need to. Our next exercise is a backward lunge to high knee drive. We'll start that in five, four, three, two, one, and go. Backwards lunge, going with my right foot first. Right knee drives up. Whoops, catch my balance and switch. We are doing 10 on each side. it up. Fifteen seconds left. All right, great job, everybody. Next, we're going to do our tempo supermans in five, four, Three, two, one, and go. Remember, tempo meaning going at a consistent pace. So lift up in three, two, one, and down. We are doing 15 of these. Remember, bring your arms and legs straight up in the air and then back down towards the ground. We're halfway there. Keep it up, everybody. Fifteen seconds left. If you still have some to do, keep doing them. If you are ready to take your break, go ahead and take your break. Five, four, three, two, one and stop. All right, great job, everybody. Get a break, get a, get a drink, take a break. You earned it after that circuit. I'm going to switch exercises that I have on my screen here. All right, perfect. Again, take as much water as you need. I'm definitely going to, it's hot in this room. All right, while everybody is taking a break, we are going to, I'm gonna to start to explain the next exercises. You can do these along with me, or if you'd like to just listen and continue to take a break, that is totally fine too. Just setting up my little counting station here. Okay, so next circuit we're gonna do, again, same thing, same EMOM, but different exercises. So our first exercise is going to be a squat jump. So again, with a squat jump, you are just going to start with your feet a little wider than hip width apart, if you'd like. You want some, yeah. Wider than hip width apart, you're going to squat down. So shift your weight backwards, your legs, your knees are going to bend, your hips are going to hinge as well. Make sure your knees don't go over your toes. If they do, make sure you're sinking your weight back so that you can wiggle your toes if somebody had asked you to. But after you squat down, you're just going to jump straight up in the air. When you jump straight up in the air, you can thrust your arms backwards because when you go down to that squat, you can bring your hands right in front of your face and then shoot your arms back and jump straight up in the air. If you don't want to add that jump to it, just do 20 squats and then take a break right after you're done. This exercise will get tiring once you hit about eight or 10. So make sure you're breathing throughout the entire exercise. And also if you don't want to add that jump, again, just squat down, stand up, squat down, stand up. Okay, our next exercise is a bob and weave with soup cans. If you joined us 
last month for our exercises. It's the same bob and weave. We just ask you to amp it up a little bit, grab some soup cans, grab some heavy books or weights, anything that you have around, but something that's not going to be too strainful for you. So in our bob and weave, our feet are again gonna be about wider than shoulder width apart. And then you're going to dip down into a squatting position. When you're in that squat, again, toes don't go forward above your knees. Knees don't go forward over your toes. You're gonna to bring your hands right in front of your chest facing each other. They're not gonna be clasped together. Hands are just gonna be facing each other and open. Or if you have those soup cans or something heavy, hold those in your hands. I'm gonna start by going to the right. So you're basically going to lunge to the right. My left leg is straight, right knee is still bent. Punch, and then go back down into your squat. Same on the left side. So I'm extending my right leg, left leg is still bent. Punch out with my left hand, back down to my center squat position, and then punch back out with my right hand as I lunge to the right. So it's basically, a lunge squat lunge kind of combination exercise where you start in that squat, lunge to the right, punch, squat, move to the left, punch, back to that squat in the middle, to the right. So you're just going side to side each time. That's our second exercise. Our third exercise is a curtsy squat to a lateral leg lift. So in this exercise, a curtsy squat, if you have not heard of it or maybe not as a different name, I'm gonna turn my body to the side so you can see me from a side angle, but you're doing kind of like a curtsy if you would be wearing a dress. I'm going to keep most of my weight on my left foot. I'm going to bring my right leg back behind my left foot, not too far, but back so that I'm on my toes. You're going to lower into a squat or lunge position, basically just bend your knees, bend your right knee and your left knee, and then come back up to a standing position. Right leg comes up and then back down. You don't need to be like a rocket and bring your leg way up to the side. It's okay, again, your leg is just going up to the side, not out in front of you, but your leg comes out to the side and then you can either rejoin it back with your left foot and then repeat on the left side by bringing that left leg back behind your right leg. Oops, almost fell over there. Bring your left leg behind your right leg squat down, stand up, and then lift that left leg up to the side and back. Like I was saying, you can either alternate legs or this time you can just do it, squat all with your right leg, and then the second time we do it through, squat with your left leg. While you're doing this exercise, your hands can be on your hips, your hands can be out in front of you, whatever you prefer, and whatever is going to give you the best balance. I'll probably have my hands on my hips, but in case I lose my balance, I'm definitely going to be able to put my hands out forward and catch myself if I need to. That was our third exercise. Our fourth exercise is a tricep extension. So again, if you still have the soup cans or weights or anything heavier that you can use, you can grab those now. So we're gonna start with our feet flat on the ground, feet right below our hips, side by side whatever you prefer. Your palms are, your arms are gonna be at your sides, palms are going to be facing backwards. Uh, with your palms facing backwards, if you're holding something, that's great. You're going to just bring, push your arms back. So again, arms are gonna be at your sides, just push your arms back at your shoulder joint and back to your sides. So to make sure you're doing this exercise correctly, when your arms are backwards, you should feel a little tension or you should try to squeeze the back of your arm or your tricep muscle, the back of your upper arm. So squeeze your arms as they're backward and then bring your arms back to your sides. When I say squeeze again, I just mean tense up that tricep muscle. So again, arms at your sides, arm back. Your arms don't have to go make a 90 degree angle with your torso. Bring them back about 45 degrees with your torso or wherever is comfortable for you and then release them back to your sides. Our final exercise is a mountain climber run and stick. So it's going to be the same tempo that our high knee run and stick is, that one, two, three, one, two, three kind of sound that you'll hear. 
So you can get into a mountain climber position. So hands flat on the ground, shoulders stacked directly above your hands. You're going to be in a high plank position. So out in that high plank, you're going to bring, if you'd like to do this slower, you can bring your right knee towards your knee, right knee towards your nose. Put your right foot back to your left foot. Bring your left knee up towards your nose. So you're just balancing on both hands and your right foot. Left foot back to your right foot. And then right foot up towards your nose and then back. After that third time, you're gonna hold it for a second and then bring it back. So it's gonna sound like this. If you would like to not be on the ground for this exercise and do a high knee run and stick like we did last month, you can just stand with your feet flat on the ground. Again, I'm at a side angle so you can see how my legs are moving. You're gonna put all your weight on your left leg, bring your right leg up, bring your right foot back to the ground, bring your all your weight on your right leg, bring your left leg up, and then back to the ground and then switch again to your right leg. So your left, all your weights on your left leg, bring your right leg up and then back down. So you want that, if for a challenge, you can make that fast, so it'll sound like this. Again, whenever I'm moving my arms, when my left, when my right leg comes up, my left arm is bent at about a 45 degree angle in front of me, and my right arm is also bent at about a 90-ish degree angle at my side, but it's backwards. So you're just, again, in opposition. So left, left leg comes up, right arm goes forward, switch, right leg comes up, left arm goes forward. Again, you want that, that one, two, three, one, two, three sound. That's our high knee or mountain climber run and stick. So with that, we're gonna get started again. Grab a sip of water. I'm gonna grab a sip of water real quick. Grab a gulp of water, whatever you need to get ready for this exercise. Again, we're gonna start with squat jumps and then go through our exercises. All right, I'll give us a five second countdown. So we'll start in three, five, Okay, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, squat jumps. So again, we're squatting down and jumping up. Try to get 20 of these in. If you don't want to do the jump after, remember, you can just do the squats. Whenever you're coming down, you don't want to make that loud pounding sound. You want to land nice and flat are nice and soft on both feet. Um, you wanna make sure that you're landing on both feet equally so it's not a, it's just a nice bounce down to the ground and then back into that next squat. Our next exercise is a bob and weave with a soup can if you want. We're starting that in 15 seconds. So if you still need to complete your squat jumps, keep doing those. We're gonna do our bob and weave in five, four, three, two, one, and go. So again, you're in that squat position. You're gonna lunge to the right, punch, come back. Come, when I say come back, come back to that center position. Lunge to the left and punch out. We're doing 15 on each side. Use whatever you have available at your house. If that's a bucket of laundry detergent, if that's a milk carton and a heavy book, then that's what it is. That's what you're working out with. All right, we are almost done. Keep going with that. We have 15 seconds left. Again, 20 of the, 15 of those on each side. But next exercise is our curtsy squat to lateral leg lift. We'll start that in five, four, three, two, one. So my hands are on my hips, all my weights on my left foot, bringing my right foot back, lower myself down to the ground, and bring my right foot up. I'm gonna switch sides as I do this. So I just did that on my left side. 
And we're going to do 10 of these on each leg. If you need to, in between your curtsy lunge to your leg lift, if you need to bring your foot back down to the ground to balance yourself, you definitely can. Ooh. Keep going. Only 10 of these each side. We're going to switch in 15 seconds. If you're still going, keep it up. If you're having a break right now, good job. Next, we're gonna go into our tricep extension in five, four, three, two, one. So again, your hands are flat at your sides, feet are flat on the ground, side by side. Hands at your sides, you're going to lift them backwards and then bring them back to your sides. Backwards and to your sides. Again, you're doing 20 of these. Make sure that your arms are tensing when they get backwards so you really feel that tighten in your in the back of your arm. If you're still going, keep it up. We are almost finished with this set. We're getting closer. We have 15 seconds left. Take your break if you need to. Keep going if you want to keep that blood flowing. We're going to go into our mountain climber run and stick in five, four, three, two, one, and go. We're almost halfway done with our set. We are doing 20 of these. So push through these. Again, if you want to switch to the high knee run and stick at any time, feel free. Going. I'm going to take a quick break. We're about 30 seconds in. Keep it up, everybody. You're doing a really good job. Keep going. All right, we have about 15 seconds left. And then we're going to repeat that cycle again. We're going to go back into our squat jumps and then go through that cycle one more time. Okay, we have five, four, three, two, one. We're gonna go back into our squat jumps. 20 of these. Oops. Keep it going. You're gonna start to feel the burn on these ones, but you can do it, push through it. We have five more minutes in the circuit, and then we're done with our EMOM sport of the day. We're halfway there. Keep pushing, keep going. We have about 15 more seconds left, and we're gonna go into our bobbin weave with soup cans. Remember to breathe throughout every exercise you're doing. Get ready to switch exercises in five, four, three, two, one, and switch. So as that bob and weave, feet vital and shoulder width apart, squat down to the center, lean to the right, lunge to the right, punch, center, left lunge, punch, center, and all the way through. Great job if you have that weight. If you're just trying this out without the weight, still you're doing a great job. Keep going. We are halfway there. For this minute, at least. <laughs> I didn't say it. 15 of these on each side. We are approaching our 15 second mark. All right, 15 seconds is here. Take a break if you need to. Keep going if you want to challenge yourself. We're gonna to switch to curtsy squats in five, four, three, two, one. So my hands are on my hips. Right foot comes back behind my left foot, bending both my legs, and then bring my left leg, my right leg, I'm sorry, up to my side and back down. When you're doing that leg lift, 
oops, lost my balance, but when you do that leg lift, your foot comes all the way off the, gr off the ground to the side. We are doing 10 on each side here. Ooh, halfway there, keep going. Keep it up. We are 15 seconds till our next exercise. Next exercise is a tricep extension. So take a break now if you need to. We're gonna get back into it. Five, four, three, two, one. So your hands are your sides. Push them back and forward. Remember the modification for this exercise if you want a little more of a challenge, or if you don't have any weights at home, is going against the wall. So go against that wall, lower yourself to the wall, and then push yourself back up. Ooh. Okay, and remember do that against the wall. You shouldn't do that just without the wall. So remember arms at your sides, keep going. We're doing this 20 times, and we are halfway there. All right. We have 15 seconds left, and then we'll do our mountain climber run and stick. Taking a break now. That's good, grab some water if you need to. We're gonna switch in five, four, three, two, one and switch, mountain climber, run and stick. You wanna to try to bring that knee towards your nose as much as you can. Keep a neutral spine, meaning you don't want your head to be bent towards your toes or anything, or you don't wanna be trying to look up at the ceiling. Just keep your head in a neutral position, pointed toward the ground. We are halfway there. Keep going. Remember, we are doing 20 of these. I'm gonna take a break, those are rough. We have 15 seconds left. If you wanna keep pushing yourself, go ahead, keep going, keep pushing. We have five, four, three, two, one and take a break. Great job. I'm going to stop my timer. Okay. I'm going to fix my exercises so I can see our next workout for today. All right. So we're going to finish with our core circuit. This is a five minute, again, five minute workout with five exercises. We'll do each of them for 30 seconds and then do them again for a little more fun. So make sure you brought enough water for your workout today. Great. Okay, I'm gonna bring my, I'm holding my phone against a little tissue box, but it's working. So I'm gonna keep using it. While you're taking a break, I'm just gonna go over all of the exercises that we're doing in our core circuit and then We'll do the circuit itself. So for this circuit, we're going to start with side plank rotations. So side plank rotations, you can either do this in a high plank or a low plank, high plank being with your hands flat on the ground, arms extended. So I'm gonna get my sheet out. Okay, so hands are flat on the ground, your shoulders are stacked above your wrists, your feet are back on the ground behind you, or you can be on your forearms. You wanna make sure your bottom isn't up in the air, that your bottom is just flat, and your back is making a straight line from your toes to your shoulders. So to do side plank rotations, you're just gonna rotate from side to side. So first I'm gonna put all my weight on my left arm and my left foot. I'm gonna rotate, hand flat on the ground, right hand comes to my hip, or up to make a T with my body, and then go back and repeat on the right side. All my weight goes on my right arm, whoops, my right foot. Hold that for a second, and then switch. Back to the left side, and switch back to the right side. For this exercise, you wanna make sure you're really engaging your core, 
so that you're really working those core muscles and not any other muscles in your body. Our next exercise is called a jackknife. So for this exercise, you are going to lay on your back, start by laying flat on your back. Arms are going to be extended above your head. Feet are going to be out in front of you. And you're going to bring your feet up to your hands. So you're gonna raise your arms and then raise your legs at the same time. Raise your upper body off the ground and then try to touch your toes. I can't touch my toes from this position, so I'm touching my shins. And then lower back to the ground. You really wanna make sure that you're squeezing your core for this because you don't wanna use your back muscles or any other muscles in your legs or anywhere else in your body. So again, laying flat on the ground, arms outstretched above your head, hands above your head. Hands and arms are a little closer together, not wide apart. Feet are together. And then you're going to just peel your legs and peel your upper body up off the ground. Touch your shins if you can. And then lower everything back to the ground. If you um, want, you can put a towel or something under your back if you feel like your back is really rubbing against the ground for that it gets uncomfortable. Our next exercise is going to be penguins. Penguins are what we did in last month in our workouts, but just to re-explain, feet are flat on the ground, your bottom is on the ground as well, your back is also on the ground. For this exercise, you are going to peel your shoulders off the ground, and then you want to make sure you are, you're just going to flap the outsides of your heels. So I'm leaning to my left, my left fingertips are touching my right heel, and then leaning to the right, right fingertips are touching my right heel. So you're just going side to side, just like that. If you want, that's a little challenging, you can spread your feet apart so that you don't have to lean side to side as part as, as much. But for that extra challenge, you can have your feet closer together and twist from side to side to touch your heels. After we finish those, we are going to do hip dips. So again, for our hip dips, we are going to go on our forearms in that low plank position. So on your forearms, you're going to be back on your feet. So toes are on the ground, forearms on the ground. You're making a straight line from your toes to your shoulders. You're just going to dip your left hip to the ground, back to center, and then dip your right hip to the ground and come back to the middle. If you need to take a break at any time, you can. Just put your knees on the ground, stretch out your back a little bit, or stretch out whatever you need to, and then get back into it. If that exercise isn't comfortable for you, you can definitely go into a cherry picker or another exercise that would better serve your body. So with a cherry picker, you're going from a low boat position, no, you're going from boat position, so you're balancing on your bottom, both feet are in the air. You can either have your hands on the ground or we really suggest you have your hands in front of you and then you lean from the left side, touch the ground, right side, touch the ground, left side, touch the ground, right side, touch the ground. And go through that motion for about 30, for about 30 seconds. You can, excuse me, you can, it's really gonna help you the more you twist your torso from side to side to touch the ground. Our final exercise is going to be a leg extension. So you are going to kind of like leg splits from last month if you joined us last month. Your upper body from your bottom, your, your shoulders is going to be on the ground. Your head will be on the ground as well. Your feet or your hands can either be under your bottom for more support or at your sides. <clears throat> You're going to lift both feet up to the ceiling so that your feet are facing the ceiling, they don't have to be parallel to the ceiling. If you're that flexible, they can be. But your feet are just up in the air, feet are together, and then you're gonna lower your legs to the ground and then bring them back up. When you lower your legs to the ground, to challenge yourself, don't let them touch the ground, bring them back up, and then lower back to the ground. Hover for a second, and then come back up. After we finish those, we'll run through all those exercises again 
and then we will be done with our core workout and go into our warm-up. If you need to, pause the video, take another drink, take a little bit of a break if you need, and then press play and get back into it. But we're gonna start, again, we're gonna start with our side plank rotations. All right, I'm gonna start our timer. I'll give a five second countdown and then we will get started. Again, side plank rotations is our first exercise. Let's get started in five, four, three, two, one, and go. So again, get into that low plank. Yeah, you can get into low plank or high plank. I forgot which exercise you're doing, sorry. And then all your weight on one side and then all your weight on the other side. We're going to switch in about five seconds to our next exercise, which is our jackknife. So you can go ahead and switch now. Again, lay your body flat on the ground, extend your body out, straight arms, straight legs, bring your arms and legs up, touch your shins and come back down to the ground. We have about 10 seconds left here. Five seconds, keep going. Next exercise is our penguins. Okay, and switch. So this exercise, quick transition. You're going to bring your feet, lay on your back, bring your feet closer to your bottom, and then tap your heels side to side. Go side to side and tap your heels. We're about halfway done with this exercise. All right, we have five seconds, and then we're going to switch to our hip dips and switch. All right, so go back into that low plank, forearm plank. So you're on your forearms, dip to the left and then to the right. Really squeeze your core. We have Five seconds left. Three, two, one, and switch. Next exercise we're doing is leg extension. So lay on your back. Remember, hands can rest underneath your bottom. Feet are up to the sky. Lower them and bring them back up. We have five more seconds left, and we're going to switch to our side plank or our side plank rotations. So switch. All right. Go into that forearm plank position or high plank position, whatever you prefer. Put all your weight on your left side, and then to your right side. Switching each time. Engage your core and breathe. We have five seconds and we're switching. Get a few more rotations in. You can go to jackknife and go. Go ahead and switch sides or switch positions. We're going to our jackknife again. Lay your body flat out. Bring your feet up to your hands and back down. Try to keep your feet and arms close together. We're here for another five seconds. Get another one in if you can. Three, two, one. And then we're gonna switch to our penguins. So feet flat on the ground. Your torso is gonna be on the ground, shoulders lifted up. And tap your heels side to side. Breathe throughout this exercise because it's really easy to hold your breath. You don't wanna do that. All right, we'll switch in five, four, three, two, one. Next exercise are our hip dips. So go back to your forearm plank and move your hips to the left and to the right side. Breathe throughout this exercise too. We have five seconds left. 
And then we're on to our last exercise. Okay, and switch for our leg extensions. You're gonna lay on your back, hands come into your bottom, feet up to the sky and lower them. Last exercise of the day, of the night, of the morning, whatever time of day you're doing this exercise. 10 more seconds left, keep going. Five, four, three, two, and one. Woo, great job. Okay, now that's our final exercise. If you need to take a break, you are more than welcome to pause the video, grab some more water, whatever you need. We are going to go into our cool down. For our first exercise in our cool down, we're going to be doing all static stretches. So static, meaning that your muscles are being kept at one length. So first exercise we're going to do is our cobra. You're gonna lay flat on your stomach, legs flat on the ground. Your hands are gonna to come to your chest level, hands flat on the ground, and just peel your upper body up off the ground. Bring your nose up to the ceiling, up to the sky. And make sure you're breathing throughout this exercise. Take a lot of deep breaths in and out. If you need to, lower your chest down to the ground and then push your chest back up off of the ground. From about your groin down should be all on the ground, feet flat on the ground. Feet can be together or um, but hip width apart. Once you feel a good stretch in Cobra, you can come up to a downward dog position like we did in our first EMOM. So your hands are going to be flat on the ground, toes on the ground. Your body is going to be in somewhat of a V shape, V position, upside down V position. If you can, lower your heels down to the ground as much as possible. That means you need to walk your hands back towards your feet. You can get that nice good stretch in there. This position isn't comfortable for you. You can come back down to the ground and have your legs flat on the ground and then try to bend forward and touch your toes. We're just trying to stretch out that posterior chain or the back of our legs. Once you've had a good stretch in your down dog or your, if you're sitting on the ground doing that stretch, we're going to move into a child's pose position. So go into your tabletop position, shoulders stacked above your wrist. You are going to go down to maybe on your knees as well. Bring your forearms back to the ground, sink your hips back down so that you're sitting on your feet and then bring your forehead down to the ground. If you need to, stretch your arms forward to further that stretch in your sides. Take a few deep breaths here. For more of a stretch on the side of your body, you can walk your hands to the left. So walking your hands, meaning just picking your hands up and placing them to the side. And then as soon as you feel a stretch in your side, that's when you can stop and just hold that stretch. Stay there for a few breaths and then walk your hands back to center. Once your hands are back at center, walk them to the opposite side. So my hands are walking over to the right. I'm starting to feel a stretch in my left side. So I'm gonna pause and just hold this position. 
and you're here for a fee of rest. And then walk your hands back to center. Our next stretch is going to be a side line quad stretch. So I'm gonna lay on my left side. My left arm is going to be stretched out and my head's gonna rest on my left arm. My left leg is going to be on its side. I'm gonna be bouncing on my left leg on its side and then I'm just gonna bring my right foot up towards my bottom and then I'm gonna hold it there. After a few breaths, you can slowly release your foot, match it back to your left foot, and then switch sides. Go for my, to stretch on the opposite side, I'm gonna lay on my right side, right arm is outstretched above my head. I'm completely bouncing on my right side. I'm gonna bring my left leg up and hold my foot by my bottom. If you need a little more stability, you can bend your right arm a little bit so that you have more area on the ground and then just hold this stretch. You don't want your, you want your knees to be in line and parallel with each other. You don't really want your, the knee that you're bending to go forward or behind that knee on the ground. You want them to be right in line with each other. After a few breaths, go ahead and release. And then our final stretch is going to be a tricep stretch. So you can either stand up, sit on your bottom, do whatever you prefer for this stretch. You're gonna bring, I'm gonna start with my right arm. So my right arm is going to come up toward the ceiling and then I'm going to bend my arm and my elbow so that my right hand touches my right shoulder. I'm gonna bring my left hand, put it on my right elbow and pull it backwards. So I'm really stretching the back of my right arm. Gonna hold that for a few breaths and then you can shake your arms out, repeat on the opposite side. So you're gonna bring your left arm up in the air and then bend your left arm at the elbow, bring your right arm to your left elbow and pull back. All right, after a few breaths, you can release your arms, shake your arms out if you need to. And if there's any other area of your body that you need to stretch, definitely feel free to stretch that out because you know your body best, you know what your body is feeling that needs to be stretched right now. So we definitely encourage you to take that time to do that now. That concludes our warm up exercises and cool down for today. Again, we're really happy that you joined us for this exercise and we hope you check out our website and YouTube channel for other exercises that you might be interested in. Thanks for joining us and we will see you next time.